All right. So again, thank you everyone for joining us today for our command overview class. My name is Chelsea with Scott Lurie Marketing. So as I said, this is our command overview. We do have more specific detailed videos on our YouTube channel, um, but for today, we are just going to briefly overview the command platform. If you have any questions, you can put them in the chat box and I will do my best at the end of class to answer them. However, if we don't get to it or um, you know you think of something after the class, you can always email us at support at scottleroymarketing.com. All right, so we'll go and get started. So here you are going to see our command login screen, command.kw.com. And here's where you're going to put in your username and password. The username is not case sensitive, however, the password is. So you can click on the eyeball and this will show you what password is written just to double check. If you're having any issues signing in, make sure there's no space either before or after the password as that may cause some issues. And then if you ever have any additional issues, if the password's correct, you're still having some issues logging in, we do recommend trying either Chrome incognito or Firefox incognito. Um, so try switching browsers and hopefully that will help you get signed in. So we're gonna click sign in. And this is going to bring us to our command dashboard. So if we go to the top left, this red KW square, if we click on that, you'll notice that our applets pop out and you'll be able to see what each of these icons mean. So today we are going to review all of these more in depth. We're gonna have our home screen, which is what we are on right now, our contacts, our tasks, which is where our follow-up or reminders are, our smart plans, which is where your drip campaigns are, your referrals platform, your opportunities, campaigns, which is where you can do your social media advertising, your direct mailers, and your email campaigns, your reports and goal settings, your designs, which is where you can create or find pre-made gra graphics for your marketing, Listings, which is where KWLS is pulling from your MLS. And then your consumer, which is your settings for your consumer app and your website. So if we go over to the right hand side, um, you're going to see there's a button called customize home. If we click on this, this will give us the opportunity to select which widgets we want on our homepage. And if there's something that you do not want, you can just uncheck it by clicking the box to remove it. And then you can click it again and the check mark will denote that it is going to show up on your homepage. And then on the right hand side, you'll be able to arrange the widgets. So if you would prefer your tasks to be the first thing that you see on your homepage, you can move that towards the top. And then once you're satisfied, you'll just hit apply and you will see those changes being made on your homepage. So here you're gonna see that we do have our goals. We have a notepad for you to type all of your notes in. We have our database health, which is telling us how we are doing in our database. So this will tell you specifically how your contacts are doing. It looks like in our database, 46% of our contacts have a phone number, et cetera. So you can know what you need to add. Then we have product updates. So if you are ever interested in knowing what's going on uh, with KWRI, you can get some more details here. And at the bottom, we have our tasks. And then we have our design updates. So this is all of the new designs that will go into the design center. You'll be able to see that right from your homepage. 
So if we scroll up to the top, you'll see right now we are in our command tab. Next, we have our connect tab. So if you click on this, this will take you to your connect profile. The next tab we have is command MC. So some of you may not be seeing this tab. This is for market center staff. So if you are staff, you will see this tab. If you are not staff, you will not have this and don't worry about it. <laughs> On the right hand side, uh, our first icon is going to be our marketplace. This is where you can upgrade or pay for additional services such as Twilio, which is um, which allows you to text your contacts. Next, we have our notifications bell. If you have a notification, it will be notated by this red dot that you see in the corner. So if we click on that, it will show us our notifications. And we can dismiss all. And you'll see that that red dot went away. Next, um, under our name, if we click on the drop down, it's going to bring up our our profiles. So you'll see here that we are connected to our personal account when we first log in. However, we do have another account, which is our team account. So some of you may be seeing two teams, or, or I'm sorry, two profiles. And if you wanted to go into your team profile, you would just click on the team and it would open up your team command. Next, you'll have your profile, settings, your command training, and a logout option. So we'll come back to those in a second. Lastly, we have a question mark. If we click on this, this is our help and information. So you can access guided tours, KW University. You can chat with support if you're having any issues, or you can post an idea if you have any suggestions on improvements or maybe something that's not working. All right, so if we go back to our settings, we're gonna click on our profile. All right, so here is going to be our profile. So you're gonna see your headshot. You'll see the roles that you have. You'll see some of your information, such as email, phone number, your connected social media accounts. You'll see service areas, and then your biography will be on the right. And then if you need to make any edits, you can click on edit profile to make those changes. So if we go back up to our settings, Let's actually go back. All right, we're gonna go back to our settings and we're gonna click on the settings tab now. So this is going to show you all of your connections and integrations. So you'll see first we have our DocuSign account that has been connected. So you'll see that it is connected and you have the option to disconnect the account. Same for dot loop. You're able to connect your social media accounts here. You have your productivity accounts that you can connect as well. So you'll see Keller covered is not currently connected. So that's what you'll see if it's not connected. And then you'll just have the option to connect the account and follow the instructions to get that connected. Down at the bottom, we have command email. So once this is connected, this is how your campaigns will appear. So if we click on manage, you can change how your name will appear on your email campaigns. So if you want this to say a different name, you can edit that. You can also change your reply to email, which is how your email will appear to your clients when they respond. So if we click on this drop down, we'll be able to change 
the email that we want displayed. And then at the bottom, you'll see our monthly account usage. So this keeps track of your free 5,000 emails. If you do use this amount, it's going to redirect you to the marketplace to upgrade your subscription. So on the left-hand side, if we go under connect settings, we're going to click on market or sorry, marketing profile. This is where all of the information will pull as you create campaigns and designs and your marketing materials. So first thing on the right hand side, you're going to see that this says use my information to brand my agent site. This is currently toggled and showing green. If this is green, this means that this is this information is publicly showing. If this is toggled off, this means that your information is currently being hidden and this is not being shown to the public. All right, so next we have um, our headshot and you have the option to either upload or remove if you need to change that. Below that, you're going to see your team logo. So if you are not on a team, we still suggest that you upload either your Market Center logo or the standard Keller Williams logo. Reason being is that um, if you do not have anything here, it is going to show up as a broken image on your campaigns. So make sure that you do have a logo here. And if you need help, you can email us and we can get this taken care of for you. Next, we have our details. So it's going to have our name, our license number, if we're on a team, our job title, you can create a slogan, your designations. If you have a military affiliation, you can click on the drop down and choose whichever applies. This is where you're going to add your biography. And then your contact information will be here. Right here under website, this is where you're going to be able to find your, well, this is one of the places you'll be able to find your website URL that you can um, have on your social medias and that you're able to market. Below that, we'll have our market center information. Next, we have our compliance section. So any compliance pieces that you need will be here. If you're not sure, you'll wanna reach out to your Market Center staff to confirm what needs to be added here. And then scrolling down to the bottom, we have our social profiles. So you can add all of your links here for them to be added. And then once you're done uploading this information, you can hit save. All right, so now we are going to go through each of the applets. And as I said in the beginning of class, uh, this is our command overview class. So we are very briefly going through all of this. If you need more information or you are interested in getting a deeper dive into any of these topics that we talk about today, we do have more detailed uh, videos on our YouTube page, Scott Lurie Marketing, and you can just search any keyword or topic that you want more information on and it should pop up for you. All right, so the first one we're going to come to is our contacts. So this is our contacts page. Let me turn our filter off. So at the top, you're going to see a search bar. And here you can either choose to search by first name, last name, email, address, or everything. 
And if you're looking for someone in particular, you can just start typing their name in and you'll see the database will auto-populate based on what you're typing in. Next, we have filters. So here you're able to set up a specific filter to find contacts. So if we wanted to find contacts that are under a specific tag, we can add that here and click apply. And it will bring up all of the contacts that have that tag associated with it. If we want to remove this filter, we can click the filter button, click clear all, and apply to get our full database up again. Next, we have our smart views. So if you are consistently looking for a list of agents, you can create a smart view. and click save and it will save a list of whichever contacts are showing at that time. That way, the next time you come into your contacts database, you don't have to manually set that filter up every time. You can just click on smart views, click on agents, and it will populate that list for you. So we'll go ahead and clear that again. Over towards the right-hand side, we have customized columns. So here we're able to better organize and change the order uh, based on what you would like showing. So if you want mailing address showing, you can click on that. If we do not want the owner of the contact, we can uncheck that. And on the right-hand side, we can drag and drop to change where they show up on the columns. And then once you're satisfied, you'll hit apply for that to, for that change to take place. Next, we have the way that uh, the database will show up. So if you want it in more of a list, you can choose this. If you want it in more of an icon, you can choose that view and you'll see that it expands so you can see more information. So again, that is whatever preference works for you. Next, you're going to see, um, this is going to show you the pages and the amount of contacts that you have. So we only have 32 contacts in our database currently, but right now we're only seeing the first 10. So if I wanted to see all of my contacts at one time, I can click on this hyperlink right here, and it will give me the option to change the view to 25, 50, 100, or 500 contacts. And then I'll be able to see all of my contacts in one page. Moving up towards the top, we have our import button. So here you're able to import a spreadsheet of multiple contacts at a time. So if we click on this, you'll want to download this template. And you can add your contacts to it and upload this file to be able to bulk import your contacts. And this is something that we will do for you as well. So you can just send your spreadsheet over to us at Scott um, or support at scottlorymarketing.com and we can get that imported for you. Next button, you'll have an add contact. So here you can manually add one contact at a time. So if you click on that, you'll just add whichever information that you have. You'll see at the bottom here, there is a tag option. This is where you can add this contact to an existing tag, or you can create your own by just typing in what you would like the tag to be. Oh, looks like we already have one. There we go. If we just wanted that to be a tag, then we can create the custom tag by clicking this. You also have the option to add more information. So you can add additional contact information. Some about me information. And then some custom information. 
You also have the option to add a custom field here as well if um, you want to add something specific that is not already added here. And then you'll just create that contact and it will add it to your database. Next button we have are the three dots. So here's where you're able to export your contacts. So if we look at the drop down, you'll see that we can export all of our own contacts. So we'll go ahead and we'll see that that's being processed. You also have the option to export mailing labels in either a CSV format, which is an Excel spreadsheet, or in a PDF format. All right, and the last thing that we have is bulk options. So if we click on this white square to the in our um, header column, you'll see that an option pops up right here to select a bulk action. So here you can either add an activity, a note, tag, add to an email list, smart plan, archive, et cetera. And this will pertain to any of the contacts that are checked off. So if you want to do it to all of your contacts, hit this button. If you just want to do it to the first five, you'll just click on those first five, and then you can do the bulk action to those that are checked off. <clears throat> all right, next we're going to go into tasks. So this is your reminders of follow-up or any opportunity tasks that you have set up. So you're going to see a list here of all of the tasks that we have. You're going to see what it's linked to, or I'm sorry, who it's linked to, who it's assigned to, the priority, and the due date. Over towards the right-hand side, you're gonna see a checkbox so that if you complete this task, you can just hit the checkbox. You can select if you want it added to the contacts timeline and add some of the information about the outcome and the description. And then you can click complete and it will move into your completed file, which we'll get to in a second. If you click on the three dots that's associated with the task, you have the option to either edit, reschedule, add a note, or archive the task. So you're going to see up at the top here that the different colors denote the timeline of the task. So currently it looks like we have a bunch of past due. If we wanted to see it in a different order, we can click on this arrow. And it's going to show us all of ours that have no due date. If you also have a lot of tasks, you do have the option to search for them. So as you start typing, you'll see the task populate. And then you can click on the task to see more information, make any adjustments. And then there is a filter option as well. So if we click on the filter button, you can filter by either due date, priority level, task type, where it's linked to, or who it was created by. So if we wanted to see all of our tasks that are due today, we can apply that filter. I don't think we have any due today. I think all of ours are past due. <laughs> so if we wanted to do past due, let's do high priority. We can apply that filter and this will show us all of our high priority past due tasks that we need to 
uh, complete as soon as possible. <laughs> All right, and then if we wanted to clear this filter, we can just click the X up at the top and that will bring all of our tasks back up. If we needed to create a new task, we can click on the create new task button at the top. And then we'll just put the information in for the task. Once we hit create, that will show up on our to-do list. Going back up to the top, you'll see that we have uh, our to-do list, we have our completed list, and our archive list. So if we click on completed, you'll see all of the tasks that have been completed. If we click on archived, we'll see all the tasks that have been archived. All right, next we're going to go to our smart plans. So this is our smart plans dashboard. You'll see when you um, first get into it that these are all of the smart plans that are in our personal library for our use. However, if you do not have anything here, it just means that you don't have anything in your library yet. So how you can add smart plans to your library is by going over to the second column up at the top that says library. And if we click on this, this is going to bring us to the public smart plans that are created by either KWRI or other agents. So at the top, we have a search bar and we can either search by smart plan name, author name, or description. You have a filter button as well. If you want a smart plan that lasts three to six months, you can choose that. If you have a certain amount of touches you want, you can sort by rating. So if we just wanted a five-star smart plan, we can filter those results and we'll see all of the smart plans that have five-star reviews. So if we wanted to search for a holiday smart plan, we can type in holiday and all of our smart plans will come up that relate to that. Or we can X out of this and we can just scroll through and you'll see some of the uh, most popular ones at the top. So if we wanted to add stay in touch with friends and family, we can see uh, a brief overview of what this is at the top, how many people downloaded it, how many reviews it has, the amount of steps, the duration, and the touches. So it looks like there are three steps in this smart plan for a duration of 24 days, and there's one touch. If you're not really, if, if that's confusing to you, that timeline, <laughs> you can click on view steps, and it will give you more of a breakdown of what entails or what the smart, smart plan entails. So it looks like there's a phone call, there's a 23-day delay. And then it restarts the smart plan for you to call the contact again. And then if you are satisfied with this, you can add this smart plan. You can change the name if you would like, and you'll click on download. And at the top, you'll see success. This has been added to your smart plans. So if we go back into our smart plans, we'll see that now this has been added to our library. So what this means is now we have the option to send this out to our contacts. All right, and if you know we wanted to make any changes to that, on the right-hand side, there is an editor button where you can edit. You also have the option to add contacts. So if you click on that, you can select all of your contacts. 
or you can just search by name, or you can search by tag. So if we wanted to add all of our ALC members, which we don't have anyone under that tag, <laughs> but they would all populate under there. Let's do agent, there we go. So all of our agents came up. Then you can click select all and add them to that smart plan. Then you're able to choose if you want it to smart start immediately or if you want it to start on a specific date. And then you'll hit confirm for that smart plan to go out to those contacts. And then under the three dots, you can either copy the smart plan, you can publish it to the library, or you can delete it from your library. Up at the top, you're going to see a create button. If you would like to create your own smart plan from scratch, you can click on that button, type your name in and click create. And this is going to open up the smart plan editor for you to be able to drag and drop whichever content you want in your smart plan. And we have, um, videos on our YouTube page that will go over how to set up a smart plan more in detail. Next, we're going to go to our referrals. So this is where you can track and manage any referrals you have going on, or I'm sorry, going out or coming in. So anyone that is in your referral network is going to show up on your referral dashboard. You'll see your pending invites, your pending referrals, received and sent referrals. You have your search bar here to search for specific referrals. If you click on the referral, if, um, you'll get a dropdown of their information. You can create a note. You can send them a referral right from your dashboard or you can remove this agent from your network. You have the option to track your referrals. And this is where you can filter them to locate specific referrals that you're looking for. Grow your network. If you want to add more referrals to your network. And then this is just showing you how it is currently um, your current view. So you can sort it differently if you'd like. And then the star, if you click this, any referrals that you add to your favorites will show up once you click on this favorites button. If you wanna send out a new referral, you can click on the new referral button at the top. You can click select an agent. Oops. by searching for agents. Keep in mind that the agents that will come up are the ones that are already in your referral network. So if you do not have them in your referral network, they're not going to show up. And I'll show you in a second how to add them to your network. So we'll send this to Aaron. We'll say that it is a buyer lead. You can put in your fee, deadline, and some of the referral information. And when you have all this information in, you can go ahead and click send. And when you go to click send, a pop-up will come up saying that the client information is not going to be sent to them until they accept the referral. So if we cancel that, up at the top, we'll move over to my referrals. So this is a breakdown of the referrals that you have sent and that you've received. You can also go over to your pending, your active, your funded, your lost, expired, rejected, and all. 
And as you see, if you hover over them, it will tell you exactly what the definition is of these different lists. Now, if we go over to map, this is where we can add agents to our network to be able to send referrals out. So at the top, you can search map and you'll see in this next uh, box to the right, it's showing you what it's going to search by. So currently it's searching by production. You can search by for uh, market centers, search in your network or search for referral patterns. So if you want to be able to see your current network's referral partners who are like one touch away from you, um, you can click on this, which is a pretty cool option. So you can either search the map or you can scroll in. So if we do, let's do Los Angeles. And you're going to start to see some numbers populate. And as I scroll in with my mouse, you're going to see these numbers start to change. So as you can see, there are a lot of agents in the Los Angeles area. On the right hand side, you're going to start to see some results populate with agents. But if you had specific criteria that you're looking for, we can click on this filter button at the top of our search bar, and you'll be able to filter agents for specific information that you're looking for. So if we want someone to have sold at least four listings in the last 12 months, we can apply that filter. And then your results, I think we just went from like 270 down to 13. So this is going to show you all the agents that fit that criteria. If I wanted to see some information on this agent, I can click on the drop down and it's going to give me a brief overview of his stats. I have the option to add him to my network by clicking on this uh, plus sign here, or I can go ahead and send a referral. Now, if I'm really not sure, or I just want to send a referral to all 13 of these agents that fit my criteria, I could go up to the top and click on broadcast referral. And this will send the referral to all of these 13 agents that fit my criteria. You'll just put your information in. And again, it's going to tell you that this is going to be confidential until we award the referral to one of these agents. And then you'll go ahead and send the broadcast. All right, next we're going to go into our opportunities. So opportunities, this is our pipeline for our transactions. If you are on a team, your team will default here. So you'll see right now we are in our team pipeline. If you're not on a team, it's just going to default to your individual pipeline. So we can click on Scott Leroy and this will be our individual one. So you'll see this is broken down into listings, buyers, leases. Then we have some stats and activity, uh, activity down at the bottom. And then we have a box that shows us our upcoming closings for this month. We scroll up, you're gonna see different stages within the opportunity. And the number at the bottom will show you how many um, contacts you have under this specific stage. On the right-hand side, you're going to see some of the uh, GCI potential income and probable income that you have. And this will adjust as you move people through stages, close them out, archive, et cetera. At 
at the top, you have an import button if you need to import information. And this will be coming from dot loop if you use dot loop. Next, you have a create opportunity button. So if you click on that, you can start inputting your information to create a new opportunity. And then you just have some settings um, that you can change for time zone, et cetera. Up at the top, we have all opportunities. So if we click on this, this is going to show us all of the opportunities that we've had. And you do have the option to uh, search either by address, opportunity, et cetera. You have your filter again to filter for specific opportunities. And then you can create smart views again, just like we did with our contacts. If you want to create specific smart views for certain years, you can do that here. And here's where you're able to change the amount that is showing. So if we wanted to show 75 opportunities, we can change that display. And it will show us the 75 opportunities. All right, next we're gonna to go to our campaigns. Let me see, it looks like we've had a few questions come in. Let me get a reset on the MailChimp login information. So if you um, currently do not have your MailChimp set up, you can just email us at support at scottlauriemarketing.com with your command login information, and we can resend that authorization email for you to get that set up. For smart plans, KW used to provide content such as a holiday plan with 10 holiday touch emails. Do they still offer that? They do. So you can just go into smart plans and search for holiday, um, and they do come up with more around the holidays. So just... Um, I'm sure they'll have some coming up since some holidays are coming up. So if you just search that within smart plans, you'll be able to find that. All right, if we're on a team, do we need to be out of the team tab to see different stages of opportunities that we have in our profile? It depends <laughs> how your... Um, how you are set up. So if you are on a team, most you are most likely going to be running your opportunities through the team tab. Um, and you can work with your team to figure out how that is set up. All right, so let me just go back to campaigns really quickly. So this is our campaigns dashboard. So the connected accounts are going to be shown in blue. So it looks like we currently have our Facebook and our command uh, email set up. However, we do not have Twitter set up. On the right-hand side, it will show us our connected accounts for paid ads and for social posts. So it looks like for social posts, we have Facebook and Instagram connected. If we wanted to connect anything else or make any changes to this, you can click manage to be able to make those adjustments. So down uh, towards the bottom, we have quick posts. So if you want to add these to your social media, these are available for you to use. And then you have some tips and training. So if you need any tips on how to create a paid ad, et cetera, you can check out these articles at the bottom. So if we go back up to the top, like I said, this was our dashboard. However, we're gonna have a tab for paid ads, emails, direct mail, and social posts. And all of these are going to show us the um, all of our numbers that we have. So how many we've sent out in the past 30 days, the impressions, the leads, how much money we've spent on paid ads. 
And then at the bottom, we're going to see all of our paid ads that we have either in a draft status, in processing, in active. So it's going to show you the status here. It's going to show you the duration, some additional information like um, how much money was spent, the goal. And if we click on the three dots, you have the option to edit your campaign, duplicate, or archive the campaign. Same thing with emails. So it's going to give you all of your stats up at the top. And then you'll get a brief overview of um, the emails that you have sent out. So you'll get the, the title of it, the status, if it was mailed, if it's still sitting in drafts, or if it has been canceled, and the additional information. Next, you'll have direct mail. So this is mail that you are sending out um, to mailboxes. You'll have your stats at the top again. And you'll be able to see all of the um, individual mailings that you've sent out with their information. So we're currently in all. However, we can go to mailed to see all of our mailed marketing campaigns. This will show us all of our drafts, et cetera. And lastly, we have our social posts. So we are able to see our live and scheduled posts that we have. So you can either view it as a week, or if we go to the right-hand side and we click on this dropdown, we can go to a month view. And this is going to show us all of the posts that we have ready to go um, that we have scheduled for our social media. And it will tell you which platform it's actually going to go on. Um, you'll see that next week, one o'clock, Facebook, we have a an ad going out, or I'm sorry, a social post going out. So in order to uh, send and create these campaigns, you'll see a create campaign button at the top. And if we click on that, we'll choose whichever option we want. And then it's going to open that specific editor for us to be able to input our text and make the changes that we need to get that campaign out. And again, we have a ton of uh, videos on our Facebook page that go way more into depth <laughs> than this, but this is just our overview for right now. So the last thing that we have is our payments button. So if we click on this, we're able to see what we have paid for and just track and make adjustments to our marketing spending. Next, we're gonna go to our reports. So this is going to bring us to our reports dashboard. And this is going to show us our database health. So what areas are not filled out within our database are going to be showing up here. So it looks like we really need to work on getting some addresses, some home anniversaries, and some birthdays for our contacts. And this will change the more information that we put into our contact database. On the right-hand side, you're going to see sources. So this is going to keep track of where you are meeting people. And this is all deriving from that contacts database. So the more information you put in here, the more metrics you'll receive. And then we have our database activity score at the bottom. So this is how much communication you have been in with your database. So it looks like we have some reaching out to do. We have a lot of red here. Up at the top, if we move over to our reports tab, this is going to break down different reports 
based on if we want a report on our opportunities. If we click on this, we can get a report on our database or on our goals as well. And then if you want to export this information, you can go to the top and click on the export button. Next, we have our goals. So this is where you're able to do goal setting. So if we click on the goal setting blue button in the top right, we're able to get started, set our goals, review them, and command will track these goals for you and tell you if you're on track or not. Lead routing. So this is if you are on a team, you will have this option and you'll be able to see the statistics. Um, this is for a rainmaker. So unless you are a rainmaker, you are not going to have this. But if you're a rainmaker, this is where you'll be able to see your team statistics. Next, we have our emails. So this is going to show you reports based on your email metrics, specifically how many were delivered, undelivered, open, clicked, replied to, et cetera. And lastly, we have texts and calls. So this is going to show you the metrics based off of your Twilio account. So if you have that set up, this will track those metrics for you. Next, we're gonna to go to our designs. All right, let's see. What's the difference between a social post and a social ad? Great question. So a social post is um, a free post. You don't pay for it. And it's just posting to your social media. A social ad is a paid ad, like a sponsored ad that you are targeting specific um, demographics or specific, um, you know, whatever you're, you're targeting. Um, so you do have to pay for social ads. Social posts are free. Great question. All right. So designs, um, this is our designs dashboard. So you're going to open up to this. This is going to be the designs that you have created and that you have added into your designs dashboard. So again, we have our search bar to search for our designs and we have our filter option. So you can filter it by the design type. On the right-hand side, we have um, the ability to import a design. If you have a design that you've created through Canva or some other platform and you wanted to add it into your command, you can just import it here or you have the option to create a design. If you click on here, um, you have the option to either select email, social, print, or video based on which design you're looking for. And then you can go create your design in the design platform. This is also going to give you the opportunity to take um, posts that are already created in case you do not wanna create your own designs. Down at the bottom, we have the option to sort either old to new or new to old. And then you can change the view either in a list view or more of an icon view. So next we're gonna go to our listings. This is where you're going to sync your MLS listings. So if we click on sync my MLS, you can search for your specific listing by either the address or the MLS number. So if this is our listing, we can click on next. We'll find the one that is ours. We will select it. We'll click next. 
And then a pop-up is going to come up that says in order to list this, or I'm sorry, link this to your command, you need to complete this form confirming if you are the primary or the co-listing agent. So this has to be your listing in order to um, sync this to your command. So just keep that in mind. And then you'll just click whichever one applies, click next. We're gonna X out because we do not have that listing. And then that listing will come onto your listing dashboard. And now this will give you the opportunity to automatically input your listing information into your designs and your campaigns. So really cool feature. All right, and if we click on the search tab up at the top, this is just another way to search. So you can either search by the property address or similar to our referrals page, you can just zoom in and zoom out to be able to find your listing. Lastly, we have our consumer icon. So this is where you can find your um, website URL. So at the top, you're going to see it right here. This is hyperlinked to redirect you to your website. So if you click on it, it's going to bring you to your personal branded Keller Williams website. Any pages that you have created for your website will be shown here. And in order to see if they are publicly displaying, we'll go to the right-hand side under view. If the eyeball is blue, that means that it is an active page. If it is grayed out, it, said it, or it says it is not an active subpage. If we click on the three dots, we have the ability to edit or delete the page. And if you need to create a new page, you can click on the button here to create a new page for your website. Next, we'll go over to our landing pages. So this is a standalone page that will have its own specific link. So generally we see agents create a landing page for an open house or something specific. Um, that is kind of a one-off to have a specific link. If it is an active landing page, you'll see that it will be green and you can just hit that green to toggle it off um, if you do not want it showing anymore. Next, we have our guide builder. So this is connected to your consumer app for clients who are registered with your app to be able to view the buyer's guide and the seller's guide. So when you have clients who register on your app, they'll be able to view this information that is on this page. Next, we have collections. So here you can create a collection and what this is, is um, it's basically like on the MLS when you create a specific property view and you can send it to clients. Here you can create a, a collection and you can push it out to any of your clients that have created a, um, a username on your app. And lastly, we have our site and our app settings. So if we click on this, this is going to show us the back end of our website. Here you have the option to change text, images, change the background for registration. So if you want clients to have to register their information to be able to see properties, you can do so here. You can link a virtual tour to your site. The next tab we have is URL. So here you'll be able to see your subdomain URL for your page. 
and then you'll be able to see your app URL. So this is important, this app URL right here, if you copy this and you send this out, or if you wanna put this in your email signature, when your clients click on this app or this URL, it will be branded to your app. So keep that in mind, you wanna send this app out, or I'm sorry, this link out. Next, we have featured listings. This is going to show you the featured listings that you have on your site. Theme, you can either change if you want your site to be red or dark themed. And lastly, we have our agent site pages. So here you are able to organize um, the way that your pages show up. So if you click on the dots to the left-hand side, you're able to drag and drop to change the layout. All right, so that is everything that we have today for our command overview. Thank you again to everyone who joined us today. And remember to visit our YouTube page for additional videos, uh, Scott Leroy Marketing on YouTube. Or you can email us at support at scottleroymarketing.com with any questions that you might have that I was not able to cover today. So thanks again for joining us and have a great rest of your week.